Zach, thank you very much for that introduction. I truly appreciate it. We are live. Here we are. And it is a, uh, according to the, the real time calendar, it's Tuesday morning. Uh, we're recording for the Wicked Whopper Wednesday episode, the big bonus uh, episode that we're going to be doing on Wednesday. If you'd like to join us live and, and stick with us the whole time, you can go to studentofthegun.com slash discord. That's D-I-S-Cord.com. Uh, that's where all the cool kids are right now. There's at least a dozen cool kids right now uh, in the in the Discord. Yes, indeed. Discord is a is a is a bear, isn't it? It's there's a lot of like shizzle. Like it could be as simple scary. or as complicated as you want it to be. There's a lot of shizzle in the Discord. Oh, happy birthday, Brian Bailey! Happy birthday! Facebook happy birthday, just told Polly. me it's his birthday. Happy birthday, Polly! What what's that from? Uh, Rocky Four. Yes, good job. Happy I'm birthday, Polly. I bought you a robot, Polly. The weirdest, birthday, most Polly. out of place thing in those Rocky movies. Uh, I know. It's like, this is, is this a Rocky movie? or <laughs> Down what to is Earth this? boxing story and then a robot. It's like, yeah. You know, because the writer's like, hey, you know, it's it's the 80s. You know what would be cool? Robots. If we had robots. robots. Yeah. You know that you know that one movie the kids are all going to see now that the the one about Johnny Five? Yeah. That you know how much money that movie made? We need to put a robot in Rocky Four. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's yeah. like, How where the hell are we gonna put a robot in Rocky Four? Oh, I don't know. I know. Rocky will give it to Paulie as a birthday gift. Happy birthday, the Polly. stupidest thing. <laughs> That's funny. They're right in the table meeting. They're like, oh, where are we going to put a robot in a boxing movie? I don't care. Rock them, sock and robots. That's where they yeah. came from. Exactly. <laughs> they were born that day yeah. in that meeting. So if, if you rock them, sock and robots, go back to the 60s. Yep. Yeah. So tomorrow, yeah. as this drops as a podcast. Like it's it's going to be Jennifer Voltmer's birthday. She's with oh. Ruffle and Feathers Homestead. Well, they are roasting our coffee for us. Yeah. Dad well, will happy have to try out for himself tomorrow, hopefully. No. Zach, did you ship it? No. Okay, so it's going to ship to today or tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> okay. it'll be here. Means it'll be in week. Wyoming in the next, next uh, month, 30 days They're or They're probably so. going to close Wyoming today. Probably. Yeah. So happy birthday, if it's, Jennifer. If it's not, happy if birthday, it's not Jennifer. closed already. And if you guys- All right, it's time to uh, to go ahead and do this show. That was yep. a, that was our cold open. Yep. I hope you enjoyed that cold open. Once again, studentogun.com slash Discord if you want to see the full show, which we're going to start go. right about now. All right, I cut the stream, so everyone should have plenty of head leeway, headway, whatever. Plenty headway. of headway. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to pull that down. The way of the head. Uh, whoops, I named this the wrong thing. Uh, whatever, who cares? All right, Dad, go ahead and start the real show in three, two, one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wicked Whopper Wednesday. We were trying to come up with a W word that meant the expansive the and fantastic. And you're like, but wonderful. Yeah, wonderful is just too generic. I don't know. So for all of you in the on the East Coast, the, in the Northeast there, it's wicked. Eh? I don't know if anybody outside of Boston or Massachusetts uses the term wicked, but it's a whopper. It's Wicked Whopper Wednesday, and we're going to give you everything, everything it is that you desire and have come to expect from Student of the Gun Radio. And if you don't know, uh, the reason, uh, if you listen to the special New Year uh, Rights of Man, Hope, Hope for a New Year episode on Monday, we talked about it, and we've been doing this show for a long time. We're in our 10th year now. And things have changed. Uh, I, I can't even imagine the number of similar podcasts that have launched in the last 10 years. Uh, but most of them, especially if they're once a week shows, drop on Monday. Uh, not all, but a lot do. I know that in, in, in I don't listen to a lot of podcasts. I don't subscribe to a lot. I subscribe to maybe five but they all drop on Monday. Barbell Logic, the um, online great books, our show. Um, yeah, what's what's his uh, what's his nuts? Writer Dojo. 
Um, there's who's the the big guy? The big guy? The big guy? The the monster hunter guy? What's his name? Oh, I feel I'm a, I feel like a jerk for not thinking. Oh man, it just left my brain. Yeah, hey, you guys that are watching, help us out. Yeah, monster, monster hunter. hunter Larry Korea. Larry Korea. Yeah, That's Larry it. Korea yeah. and his partner have a a uh, podcast called uh, the Writers Dojo. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep, he just started it this last year, and it drops. I believe every, on every Monday too. So the point is what we've discovered because Zach's a smart guy and we've been paying attention is that uh, our audience uh, is, they subscribe to us, our show drops on Monday and then X, Y, Z and you know, ABC shows all drop on Monday. So there's a clutter and people have to decide which one am I going to download, which one am I going to listen to right now, blah, 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 blah. So in order to remove ourselves from the Monday drop clutter, we're, and we, we've done the research that mo more people download the show and listen to the show on Wednesday than do on Monday. And, I, and the shows are the exact same. I mean, I mean, it's the same format, and it's us and everything. So what would be the difference? The only difference is the day, really, if you think about it. The only difference is the day. So... In order to give you a better listening experience and also remove ourselves from the Monday morning show drop clutter, we're doing this on Wednesday now. So from this point forward, uh, we gave you a uh, uh, rights of man hope for a brand new year on Monday, and we explained it to you. And if you missed that one, you can go back and listen to it. So without further ado, did we play the music yet? We have not played the music yet. And All right, without now, further ado, let's go ahead and let Zach play the music. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Imports Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the Pimp Hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Yes. Oh, man, we took some time off uh, during the... We took some time off during the holiday season, and so much happened. For instance, Let's this, go Brandon. this happened. Let's go, Brandon. I agree. Hey. <laughs> oh man that happened on, on the on <laughs> christmas eve and i was like ah oh, we're not gonna be back on the radio for a week but that's going on the board that's going on the board let's right go there brandon. let's go brandon i agree hey. oh when you tell yourself on national tv when someone tells you to go f yourself and then you say I agree. I agree. I should go F myself. Yep. You are a, a mental patient. But must be what? But must be what? For all the people out there saying, he never said that. Yes, he did. Yeah, he did. He said that. He said. But must be what? Because the person, the meat puppet occupying the White House is has the mental capacity of a potato. And it's okay, though, because orange man bad. So, you know, just, yeah, there you go. Uh, what else happened while we were on our holiday break? That always happens. It always it happened. It used to happen to Rush all the time. He would come back. He's like, I can't take days off. <laughs> I, take, I take a week off. And, you know, we used to, every time we would take time off and go to Las Vegas, like years back, stuff would happen. Uh, it just, we need to stop doing that. Any hooser, uh, we've got on now on Monday, we talked about uh, the Papa X-Ray Niner, the PX-9 at Gen 3, and how, A, I did it up in the winter white, uh, the, the uh, mission-specific Duracoat. But something else that I want you guys to understand and remember, because we've had discussions and people have asked, like, oh, if I'm going to put a red dot on a gun, do I need to have suppressor height sights on it? And yada, 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 right? Um, uh, the answer is yes and no. A lot of pistols out there are, tr are trying to be, I don't, I don't feel, 
I kind of feel sorry for manufacturers. I, I, I you know, um, because let's say you are Glock, Smith, whomever, and you want to make a duty gun that is optic ready. But in our world, there are essentially four different footprints or platforms. Actually, now there's five with the the micro. Uh, so you say, well, what cut is it? Do we want to do the, the Burris Fast Fire? Do we want to do the Delta Point? Do we want to do the RMR? Do we want to do the uh, the the mini, the micro, uh, like the shield optic? You know, that's that's now that's a smaller one. What do we want to do? And people, and, and of course, when you're manufacturing something, you're like, well, crap. Part of our audience likes the Delta Point. Part of our audience likes the RMR. Part of our audience like this. Part of you know like that. And like, well, crap. So people like Glock, they compromised. And they have mounting plates, right? So when you buy an MOS, a Glock MOS, a, a, a modular optic system, uh, you get different plates, plate one, plate two, plate three, plate four, depend, four depending on what you want to install on your gun. But when you do that, what do you do, Jared? You end up putting material between the base of the slide, between the slide and the optic, and that raises it up, right? Yep. So now the 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 red dot is higher. You're like it's not that high, yeah. But when you're talking about front sights, a sixteenth or an eighteenth or an eighth of an inch, an eighth of an inch is a lot. With the uh, with the PX9 Gen three, it's cut for an RMR footprint. That's it. So when you remove the plate and you set the sight down, it sits down onto the slide. It's, you know, it, it sits down onto the slide. And with our sights, with the Accurate sights from Night Vision, you can look through the RMR and you can still see the front sight. You can, well, you can still line up the front sight through the rear sight. Yep. So you don't need suppressor height sights. Just use the Accurate sights. And, the, and we, we've already told you, and you should know this, you can shoot with a suppressor on your gun with the accurate sights standard height because they're taller than normal Glock, the plastic Glock sights, the dust covers that they put on them, the cheap dust covers. They're super small. They're super low. They're too low. Uh, they cause people to actually elevate the front of the gun. And so your shots go high. And we fixed all that with the accurate sights. So if you guys are interested in the PX9 Gen 3 pistols uh, and you say, well, the sights are fine. And, and you know, the stock sights are fine. There's nothing wrong with them. But if you would like better sights, you can drop in the and we don't we haven't pimped this and we're, we're really remiss for not pimping it. Who typed Accu7? <laughs> Was that you? <laughs> Add one. Oh. Uh, the, the accurate sights are actually new and improved. They're better than the originals. The current models are better than the originals. Yeah, they're, I just installed a set easier of the to new install. ones on, a, on somebody else's gun, and I still have the originals on mine because I'm so giving. I always give the new ones away. Yep. And I, was, I looked at it when I felt them, and I was like, man, this is way better, and the installation is way easier. Yeah, so we took a, you know, we, us, Night Vision, took a good thing and made it better. So the accurate sights for the Glock pistols are improved and they're even better than they were. Oh, there you go. Uh, and then one other thing that we talked about, uh, and this is kind of neat. I actually put a, uh, an email into our buddies at SDS Imports uh, and asked them, when are people going to be able to buy extra magazines for their PX9 Gen 3? Because the PX9 Gen 3 magazines are SIG 226 pattern. Wee, 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 wee. <laughs> you want to do something cool? Let's do it right now. You better, you better let him know that he's on. Dave. Hello. You, you're, on, you're on with everybody. Hello, Dave. Uh, you're, you're on with everybody. You're on the show. You're live streaming right now. Are you serious? Yes. Yep. Of course. 
You called so, while we were recording. Well, I hope everyone had a great Christmas and a happy new year and all that good stuff. This is spooky. And, uh, yeah, we I were was, just talking about we you. Just, I said I just sent an email to my friends at SDS Imports, and I'm not kidding. I just said this and asked them when we'll be able to buy extra mags. And then you called. <laughs> That's crazy. I actually have an order placed, and I'm seeing how quickly I can get some of those in, but I don't have a firm date yet. All but right. I've well, got like 100 plus coming as quick right. as I can get them here. Woo. Woo. Because well, I, cause I went out and I tested the gun, and I, I, I put a, a generic, well, a standard SIG 226 magazine in that. Ran it, shot mm-hmm. it, it was fine. Um, and and I, I know how people are. They're like, ooh, that's a great idea. <laughs> it is a great idea. <sighs> you didn't even get the model with the 20 round mag, did you? No. Because I pushed that to you. Yeah, we actually have the way those guns are shipping, they come with the 18 rounder, and they also come with an 18 rounder with a plus two extension. Holy Katzenberger! Oh. That's crazy. <laughs> That's it crazy. would have been less crazy if they told me beforehand because I'm like, hey, this is really <laughs> nice. I wish I could have told my friends about this. this is, oh, man. Uh, it's like Christmas all over. It's like a Christmas bonus. Yeah. <laughs> So everybody that's listening right now is like, they had to have planned this. This yeah, had to I, be planned because we got people listening live right now. They're like, there's no way. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that you said something because I had a line of thought that was in, involved yep. adult talk and other things. And, uh, <laughs> I do it. Really glad you did not lead off with that because when, if you'd let me gone, uh, it would not have been good. Yeah. When when the phone rang right after he said that he emailed you, I was like. Oh, that's got to be. That's gotta and I was be like, Dave. we better let him know that we are live. <laughs> I really, really. Well, I didn't see your email. Oh, yeah. I was actually the email calling it. about something else. I didn't oh. see the email. Yet. <laughs> oh, well, man. okay. No, that's really. Well, Paul and I have had, unfortunately or fortunately, a psychic connection for a number of years. Oh, yeah. So that does not surprise me. Oh. It worries me a little sometimes, <laughs> but that is, there is multiple occasions where it was like, I just picked up the phone to call you, and it rang. You know? like, yeah. Yep, oh, it's happened. true, man. It's true. What did you – oh, oh, speaking of which, it's, it's – uh, have you guys ever done this? You call somebody who's a bro. Now – when I call people, I expect to talk to an adult man who's of like minded. You know, I don't watch my mouth at all. And we're yakking, yakking, and somebody say, Hey, man, you're on speaker and I'm in the phone. You're, uh, you know, in the car with my kids. I'm like, You, it's your responsibility <laughs> yes. to tell yeah. me that up front. Yeah. Don't start talking to me for like 10 minutes and then say, Hey, don't say, yeah. don't say swears because we're on speaker in the <laughs> car with my kids. <laughs> I, I've made it a standard practice. If they're if somebody's on speakerphone, I answer the phone and say, "Hey, you're on speaker," <laughs> just to clear myself uh, that's of very, any responsibility. Very, very good. That's like yeah. mar- Marine Detachment. Be this is Corporal Marco. Be advised, you're an unsecured line. How may I help you, sir, or ma'am? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, be advised, this is an unsecured line. <laughs> uh, it, 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 it's very unsecure. This goes beyond secure. Uh, this is a mass. This is a mass media line. Oh man! So yeah, we were just <laughs> we we're just yakking about the Papa X Ray Niner uh, and about how awesome. you can put how about the accurate sights from night vision will fit on mm-hmm. it, and you can use them in conjunction with your red dot because the red dot sits low enough in the slide that you can see through it and co-witness. It's so, it's so fargan easy to co-witness your red dot once you have good sights on it. Well, it, it I, it's, it's crazy that because when I knew I was getting one of those, they were coming in. I had ordered, I ordered a Holosun. Hope that's okay to say. Here, that's let me rephrase fine. that. I ordered a red dot sight. <laughs> well, you never know. That's fine. And I ordered suppressor height sights. And I got the dot in first. It was like, I don't need suppressor sight height sights. Let's just cancel that. that yep. They really did a good job on that. That was I would love to say that was me. That was not me. Mm. 
it was me who it was me who said, yeah, we really need to have, you know, set up for a red dot. But I was not the one who said, and if you can drop that down where it'll work. I wish I had, but I hadn't. But that's a that's plus. Okay. Everybody so you get to save money because you don't have to. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, everyone who's listening is it what? <laughs> no, everybody that's listening will send their love directly to Dave because it was Dave's idea. That's right, and Dave, Dave, yeah, I Dave wish it was. The magazine's it was. good. You know what's funny? Uh, we're talking about magazines and how you and I discuss how how it's it's the American imbeciles. It's the this this psychotic American desire to see how many rounds are inside of their magazine. Do I have ten or eleven? Let me look. Um, but in in military magazines, once they started making high cap magazines, they realized they're like, we don't need 87 holes in these mags. I've got original high power mags, you know, P35 high power mags, and they have three holes. That's it. Uh, and the, you know, the, the Beretta mags have three holes. That's it. You know, the M9 mags have three holes. That's it. Uh, and, and they did that because you don't need 17 holes in the freaking magazine because all those holes do is let dust in. And uh, and what you guys did with the Gen 3 by by putting the holes A on the side and B, reducing the number of holes to a five. I don't What I can't figure out, though, is they got a five, a 10, a 15, and an 18. Why not just do an 18 and eliminate the 15? I don't know. But... Either way, it's still good. It's still good. <laughs> having having multiple holes is akin to continuously press checking. I'm not going to get into the validity or not. I think sometimes maybe it works if that's your deal. But if you have to keep kind of like you see movies where the guy press checks like every three seconds, he hasn't shot yet. You mean? But he keeps press checking. <laughs> yeah. And it's like that dude is scared. You mean blood diamond? <laughs> He is, yeah, exactly. at some point, did he, like, accidentally hit the mag release and he ran around without ammo in it? I don't so know. So now he feels the need to continue, continue to press check. So, yeah, having all those holes is kind of like the whole, you know, how many? Just keep putting bullets in it. The magazine will let you know when it's had enough. Well, my, yeah. my mantra, and this is, it's, it's amazing how people will fight you on the simplest things. I said, like, should I reload the gun? I don't know. Did it make noise? No, then leave, it didn't make noise. Then leave it alone. Okay. Did it, did it make noise? Yeah, it made noise. Okay, then reload it. Yeah, but but it still probably has a bunch. I'm like, did it make noise? Yeah. Then put more in it. That's it. If it didn't make noise, leave it alone. If it did make noise, reload it. That's that's all you need. Would to you do. Li- would you like to have more bullets? If the answer is <laughs> yes, then put more there. Yeah. If the answer is no, then don't put more there. It's like I like more bullets most of the time. You don't get penalized. You're like, well, you know, I only fired three and then I reloaded, so I have to, I have to take a penalty for reloading. You don't take a penalty for reloading in. The- <laughs> I mean, that's the way people behave. It's like, well, if I have rounds left over at the end of the gunfight, then I have to take penalty points. It's like now, now you do take a penalty if you have to reload in the middle of a gunfight. That's when the penalty that points occur. is yeah. a penalty. Yeah, yeah. If you need more and don't have more, then yeah, uh, that's the penalty. That's the yeah. penalty. Oh. <laughs> so here's the, I guess the deal is, Dave, we should save our private conversation for when we're not live with the world? <laughs> well, there's a couple things that I want to ask you, and I don't want to be embarrassed about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll do that. So I will contact you later on in the day. How's that sound? Very good. All Very right. good. It was good to talk to you. Absolutely. Thanks, Dave. And to, and to all of my fellow student of the guns, you know, carry and carry on there you go <laughs> talk to you later <laughs> bye thank you guys bye all right and so that was our impromptu special that was Dave from crazy SDF that was so that the was, one time uh, wow the <sighs> one time i forget to, to put my phone in airplane mode it was meant you know, to be do you know why i forgot because your mom came into the studio yeah it was just meant to be yeah that was the Lord putting that thing that on was, not airplane was, mode because he knew Dave was going to call. That's, that's right. a perfect time to talk to everybody. 
<laughs> and when you when you're like, oh, look at that, I was like, that's Dave. We need to it's make sure that he doesn't go off on his thought tangent because. <laughs> Well, Dave's Dave's not uh, like he's not like some of my friends that would would start oh, off a yeah. conversation with "Hey, what's up?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will what's say, up, Effer? I will say when he was like, "Yeah." So the thing with having multiple holes is, I was like, uh, "We're live, we're live, we're live." Tuck, tuck, tuck. <laughs> Sometimes uh, it's not a bad thing. But Ryan anyway. Barker said three holes is the appropriate number to put things into. <laughs> That's right. Anything more than three is a freak show. <laughs> uh oh what movie was it it was some movie it was an obscure movie and I, this is kind of pg so calm down but uh kind of pg i don't know what that means I, well, it was some Does that movie pg-13 yeah i was gonna say it was a movie and then the and there was like the the husbands were off in the den doing husband rawr things and the women were drinking wine in the kitchen and the one woman says have you ever thought about, you know, having another man, with, you know, whatever? And, and and she's like, oh, yeah, you know. And, and then the other ones, she's like, she goes, well, sometimes I think about, you know, three. And then the girl's like, what would you do with three? And then <laughs> the other girl goes, oh. <laughs> the other wife goes, oh. oh. And has that moment of clarity. So there you go, three holes. All right, moving on. Uh, every <laughs> Every week, we do this little thing called Brownells Bullet Points, and today is no exception. So bump us in. All right, bing, bang, boom. Now is the time. It is. It is. Uh, it is a brand new year, and I knew this was coming. Uh, I didn't realize the extent that it was going to happen. I, I figured once it got cold, people were focused on the holidays and things kind of chilled a little bit, that the gates would open. The floodgates would kind of open regarding ammunition, parts, pieces, all that stuff. Well, it, it's happened. Uh, right now, their Brownells has a ton of pieces, parts, accessories in stock uh the in their in their new new products in their specials and so forth they got bolts and bolt carrier groups which is always that thing the bolt carrier group is generally the thing that holds up the build because let's face it with modern machinery a lower receiver or an upper receiver pretty simple right not a hard thing to make you could probably buy a machine and make one uh but bolts and bolt carriers are different. They're a different animal. Uh, and you, you just, you don't want somebody making a bolt or a bolt carrier in a garage. Uh, <laughs> I mean, let's face it. Literally, you don't you know can, me. You can take an injection molding machine and make a lower receiver and it'll probably work. Uh, but right now, uh, Brownells has bolt carriers on sale. Complete bolt carrier groups, a Brownells brand uh, stock bolt carrier group. This is a, a full size um, and, and it's only, well, no, it's not, it's not a full auto one, but. I was going to say that's a distinction I want to make for you guys that are listening. Yeah. If you want to use a hard reset echo type trigger of some sort, make sure you get the heavy bolt. Yeah. Not you got to get the heavy bolt. bolt. Yeah. You have to get the heavy bolt. But 89 bucks. On sale from 159. Here's the deal. Do you guys have extra bolt carriers? <laughs> I actually have a bolt carrier group that doesn't have a gun to go with it, uh, just because. Uh, just because. So that's never a bad thing to have. Magazines. Uh, I've been watching the mag. Here's the deal. If you don't have six magazines for your rifle and six magazines for your auto loading pistol, you're wrong. Right now. All of them are on sale there. This is the time you could either listen to me or don't. I don't care. Uh, but parts are on sale. And also I'm noticing now this isn't an across the board thing because I saw there were a few online retailers. It's weird when I see one online retailer that's got 762 by 39 for $309 
for a thousand, thirty cents a shot, right? Then I see another one for three hundred ninety nine dollars for a thousand, and it's the same brand of ammo. I'm like, okay, somebody's doing something here because I know I know they're all getting it from the same manufacturers. <laughs> It's not like one guy's like, oh, I got it from this guy. You know, you didn't. Um, yeah. So shop around. Ammunition is coming down. You know what I saw the other day, Jared, which was I haven't seen since the the panic. 5.7 by 28. Uh, the 5.7 ammo. Mm -hmm. It either was non-existent or was two dollars a shot. And my thinking is, I'll I'll poke you with a sharp stick before I give you two dollars a shot for that tiny little round. I noticed that some some people had it in stock, and I also noticed it was down to around seventy cents a shot, which still is not great for a little tiny round like that. But better than it was. It's a it's available. And B, it's better than, I mean, it was literally up to two bucks a shot, which is just, this just TikTok prices. Um, so that even, I was surprised to see that come back because that's not a, you know, when, when, man, when ammunition manufacturers, when they're doing a run, that is not the top. They're like, yeah, we got to set up these machines now and run five, seven by 28 now screw all that nine millimeter two two three crap we'll do that later we're gonna do this one no this is the bottom of the ammo priority list it, it's like with it's on the line of 243 220 swift six millimeter remington it's not that popular um and last year i should have gotten one but uh maybe i know somebody at ruger ruger had the the ruger 57 pistols on sale they were on sale for around, I can't remember which retailer it was. They had them on sale for around $699 or $599 or something. And I was like, oh, and I thought that'd be a great prairie dog gun, right? An up-close prairie dog gun. Then I realized that I couldn't get the ammo for it. And I was like, screw that crap. Um, but, yeah, maybe things are changing. Maybe things are changing. So what I'm going to tell you hippies is right now at brownells they've got parts they have pieces parts now's the time if you're going to do a gun build get them uh do you think we'll ever see 30 cents around 223 again uh maybe if we can get the communists in dc to shut up for a few weeks a month or two maybe if we can get the communists in dc to shut up and stop forcing people to panic buy, then yes. Uh, I am actually seeing 223 coming down into like 38, 39 cents a shot. Um, so maybe it might get back down to 30 cents a shot. Uh, just got to watch. Now, the, the, you're, you're going to see the steel case stuff come down, but as we've discussed, they're, some some guns will not run steel case two two three um some will some won't if you got uh if you got a gun that'll run steel case two two three reliably all the time every time then rock on buy it but most american off the shelf ars will only run steel case until the gun gets hot and then it'll jam it'll malfunction you'll get stoppages so uh but uh, yeah, that's like I said, I, I, I subscribe to pretty much every single freaking online gun seller, ammo seller, because I I watch, you know, and, and some of them I laugh. I'll open the email. I'm like, you're a crack smoker. You people need to switch brands of crack because there's no way. And I've got to believe, Jared, that most Americans are kind of like me, where they they just out of habit or default, they've subscribed to brownells and midway and ps palmetto and this and that and primary and you know, every everybody does my my freaking what is it promotions box what's the one on uh there's there's four boxes there's, yeah promotions would be where it goes yeah my promotions box is literally filled 
Okay, I'll, I'll open it right now. So today, I've gotten emails from Palmetto State, Classic Firearms, Primary Arms, uh, Patriot Outfitters, Under Armour, Galls, Ammo Depot, Ammo Land, totally not a, not the a same thing. Oh, <laughs> uh, and oh, and it, another one from Ammo Depot. So oh, and Optics Planet. So that's that's all in twenty four hours. I've gotten those, and and you know if you open up the one from Ammo Optics Planet or or Brownells or Primary Arms or PSA, they're all going to have similar stuff. So it's pretty easy for American consumers to to price shop, you know. And, and if one company is selling a thousand rounds for three hundred bucks and another selling a thousand rounds for four hundred, and it's the same ammo. It's kind of a no-brainer. You know, it's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, with Brownells, the thing that you want to pay attention to is they do, uh, quite often, they do the free shipping. Free shipping on all orders over $49. Put in code BRN or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that happens a lot. Uh, and if you want to be notified of when that's happening, what can you do, Jared? What can they do? they want to be notified you join their newsletter list you go to uh, oh actually you could text five five brn to five five six two two three that's right you can get i would recommend doing that over email because most of us check our phones way more than we check email yeah and if you want to get something when it's available then brn to five five six two two three there you go there you go you'll never miss another deal all right duracoat why well because sometimes Life is too short to have a, an ugly gun. It is. It's uh, too it is. short. Yeah, yeah. We 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 already plugged SDS. I mean, we had a special guest. <laughs> that was pretty cool. So there you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, we talked about Barnell Barnall ammunition on Monday, and how Barnall ammunition, the best Russian ammo you're going to get your hands on if you can get your hands on it, um, is actually. Uh, I've noticed that there that there's a lot of it from the online retailers. So that's a good thing. That's a positive thing. Um, so we will. Oh, and, and don't forget about your shower gun. Yeah. If you haven't watched the High Point shower gun video yet, you're wrong. So you should actually fix yourself. All right. Moving along. Moving along. Moving along. Uh, now's the time for you to, well, close that hole under your nose. Open up both of your ears and listen louder. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed. Uh, we're about to do our homeroom. But before we do that, I got a question for you guys. What are you guys doing for winter activities? Just like sitting in a chair watching TV? Yeah. Uh, it's the best thing. Yeah, it's the best thing. <laughs> I busted out the snowshoes the other day. Uh, I had to, uh, why well, I waited, because quite frankly, the wind, we were having some serious, crazy, like hurricane wind you know, 30, 40 mile an hour wind gusts and stuff like that. And I like being out in the snow, but I'm not, I'm going to tell you the truth. If it's 30 mile an hour wind, I'm not going out. I don't care. <laughs> but uh, a few days ago, we had no wind. So I busted out the snowshoes. I went for a little snowshoe hike and uh, it, it, where we are, it, this, the snow was anywhere from six inches to two feet, you know, depending on where you went uh, or, um, and the, those black snowshoes, Jared, you ever used the snowshoes that we've got? Not the, I don't think I've used any of the pairs that you have. Oh, Zach has. Yeah. The, uh, the black ones, they're so loud. <laughs> they flop. They make a flop noise. Every time you take a step, it's like running on asphalt with flip flops. <laughs> That's like funny. Flop. You take a step, flop, flop, flop. Yeah. Uh, they, but the uh, the military snowshoes, the ones that look like giant tennis rackets, those don't make any noise. They're they're quiet. Uh, so the if you want to be quiet, if you want to sneak up on something, I was thinking about those those black snowshoes. I'm like, 
they're good because you can trudge through deep snow, which is good. But if you wanted to like sneak up on a, a deer or something, there's gonna be like, what's that flopping sound? Yeah, flop, flop, flop. <laughs> what's that flopping sound? What's that flopping sound? There's somebody trying to sneak up with, to me on snowshoes. But they, the, the civilian snowshoes, they do actually have ice grip spikes on the bottom. So if you hit ice, um, there are spikes on the bottom to help you stabilize yourself when ice, whereas the military ones don't. They're just like giant tennis racket type things. Oh, and word to the wise. And I learned this. If you go to one of these online surplus stores, uh, you know, these Army, Navy surplus online things, and they have military snowshoes, and it seems like it's a really good deal. Find out if the bindings are included. Because mm-hmm. some of them will just sell you the, the rackets, and they're like, oh, yeah, there's no bindings. Did you want those? Yeah, I kind of did. Oh, well, those are, you got to get those somewhere else. <laughs> uh, and when you, if you do get them, you're going to have to figure out how to attach the bindings yourself. And it's not as obvious as you might think. I had to, I had to find a YouTube video to help me out because the, the pencil drawing instructions were kind of like, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> but once I figured it out, it, it worked out okay. But, uh, uh, yeah, so if you guys are into snowshoeing or whatever, oh, and the snowshoes, there are they are left right. You have to put them on the correct way. You can't do them backwards. Well, you can if you try and do them backwards, you're gonna have a hard time. So, just, um, but yeah. So today, though, I don't know. I don't think snowshoeing is on the agenda for today because the wind is freaking howling out there. The wind is howling. All right, moving on. Let's go ahead and do our our regularly scheduled student of the gun homeroom brought to you by our good friends at crossbreed holsters all right yes indeed uh student of the gun or sotg sotg the four letters SOTG uh, would be the promotional code that you want to use when you go to crossbreedholsters.com and check out so you can save some money, get a good made in America U- holster, made in the USA holster, and save money on it. You'd be happy camper. And don't forget, they have a brand new holster called the. This is when you fill in the blank for me. I don't know the answer, so Jared, you do it. I was going to say the reckoning, but that's not new. I nope, can't remember that's not the, the new name one. of the brand new one. The brand new one. It's brand new, and it is called. Da, 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 da. It's called the twenty five percent off uh, extended sale. No, it's called the Rogue. Rogue. That's right. The Rogue. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The Rogue. And right now, the Rogue is on sale. So if you'd like a, it's an inside of the waistband holster. Uh, it is a system. You can get just a holster or you can get a holster with a mag carrier combo. Uh, if, if you're into the appendix type carry, then this is probably one for you. So check it out. All right. We're all about being dangerous on demand here, right? Are we not? Yes, we are. That is what the whole, the, the the homeroom is all about. We had two stories that occurred like back to back, and I want to is is this some karma? Democrats don't believe that you should be dangerous on demand. They believe that you should be disarmed, and that's part of their platform. Okay, don't say. Oh, no, I'm a Democrat and I own a gun. I don't care if you're a Democrat and you own a gun. First of all, I don't know what you're doing here because your party is the party of disarming the American people. That is on their platform. Their platform is to disarm Americans. All right. They never met a criminal they didn't like or feel sorry for. We got a story out of Philadelphia, which in case you didn't know it, is a liberal democrat run crap hole philadelphia is and has been for my entire adult life 
run by Democrats, and it is a criminal infested shite hole, right? Well, we're going to give you guys this story. There's a uh, a skeleton with with skin stretched over it. Um, that is a Democrat, and got to experience. Well, I don't know why she's upset. She got to spend time with her constituents. She had the opportunity to spend time with registered Democrat voters, so I think that she would be happy about that. But uh, Jared's going to share this story with you guys, and you can decide on your own whether or not this is karma. Says Democratic Congresswoman Mary Gay Scanlon. She's Mary Ann Gay. Mm. Carjacked at gunpoint in Philadelphia. What? The Philadelphia Inquirer has reported that Congresswoman Mary Gay Scanlon was carjacked in broad daylight Wednesday afternoon after touring FDR Park in South Philly. (laughs) Scanlon and other elected (laughs) officials met to discuss constituents concerns around ongoing development plans for the FDR Park. The congressional lawmaker whose district represents parts of South Philadelphia and Delaware County was accompanied by another member of her staff. But the two drove separately. Isn't uh, that where the Fresh Prince is from? No. Is it Fresh Prince of Bel Air? South Philadelphia, born and raised. Yeah, buddy. On the playground is where I spent most of my days. <laughs> I, I don't know if the Fresh Prince was anywhere near this when it happened. We might want to reach out and find out fresh? Where, where Jazzy Jeff was. I don't know. Jazzy Jeff. Yeah. I don't know who that is. DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Oh, duh. I, his name was Jeff? Jazzy Jeff? Yeah. No, I, no, I have to Google that. But you're probably right because you know those things. Uh, around 2.45 p.m., Scanlon was walking alone back to her car on the 1900th block of Patterson Avenue when she was approached by two armed men who demanded her car keys and personal belongings. I thought that carjacking was like pulling you out of a car. Well, I mean, I guess if you walk up to your car and they take your keys and steal it, then yeah. yeah. Um, but a, isn't isn't there a law against that in Philadelphia? Yeah, there should be. If there's not. They need to pass a law against that. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, they should definitely do that. Yeah. A spokesperson for the congresswoman told the paper that Scanlon was physically okay, but her vehicle and possessions are gone. Scanlon thanks the Philadelphia Police Department for their swift response and appreciates the efforts of both Sergeant at Arms in D.C. and her local police department for coordinating with Philly PD to ensure her continued safety. Okay, stop. She was robbed. They got away with her stuff. What was the swift response? They showed up to take the report. They must have. They must have uh, kept her. Somebody stayed with her. I'm sure on her transport back to her house. The arrest so comes they, as they showed showed up to take the report, and she's thank you very much for showing up to take the report. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> the arrest comes as Philadelphia grapples with how to deal with rising crime. <gasps> Recently, the city surpassed 500 homicides committed in the year of 2021, with advocacy groups blaming Philadelphia's district attorney, Larry Krasner, a George Soros-backed progressive who is viewed as soft on crime. What? So I saw a, there's actually a couple things. So it seems that homicides are, have risen across multiple states in the United States. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know how many, but I've seen stories about homicides being higher in 2020. Chicago just broke another record. Yeah, in 2020. Well, it, it was also true for uh, Utah and Arizona and states over here as well. So I, if I had to draw a conclusion, I would say that people are a little bit hostile about the way that things are being dealt with. Um, But the – and there's another thing that I saw – um, and I don't have any data to back this up, so it, it's up to you guys to go research for yourselves, that there are these district attorneys that are being installed, quote unquote, by George Soros, who every single one of them that have that are backed by George Soros are all soft on crime. Yeah. 
in this manner. It's on, so it's, it's on it's, purpose. And, yeah, well, and then you have to say, well, if that's true, and they are all backed by George Soros, then why are they all taking the same stance of, as being soft on crime? It's interesting. Because if you want his money to run your campaign to get elected, you have to do what he wants you to do. That's how that works. Or you could say he only gives his money to people that he knows are going to do what he wants them to do. Yeah, but then the question is, well, why does he want him to be soft on crime? Why is he picking people that are soft on crime? I can tell you. Do you want me to explain that to you? Uh, I mean, I have my own conclusions. but Well, the reason is for it, when you're a leftist, when you're a socialist, this is what you have to do. You have to create crises. You create the crises. All right, I wrote a little book called Examining the Armed Citizen. And in the book, there's a chapter about how terrorists and criminals are the Democrats' best friend. They're both a reason and an excuse. Because if crime is low, then why do the people need you to control them? They don't. But if crime is high, that, that's you're, also you're that's, scared and you go to the government for yeah, but that thought process is like saying, well, I have bodyguards and nothing's happened. So I'm going to fire my bodyguards. No, it's the exact same thought process. Okay. Well, all right. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure where you, I, I let, let's stick to the George Soros. Why would you want a district attorney that is soft on crime? Because when you have high crime, then you have to go to the people and say, well, you know, there's high crime. We have you have to a give us lots of money. We have to fund the police with lots of money. OK, and we need more laws. Look at this story. In this story, it says record gun violence. How do you push gun control and civilian disarmament if crime is low? You don't. You keep crime high, you blame an object, and then you tell people, well, well I mean, if, if you don't support our, our new gun confiscation program, then you must love crime. What, what did Limbaugh say? It always generates the exact opposite of their stated intent. Their stated intent is, we're Democrats. Give us control of your city. Okay, here's the control of the city. We care about your safety and blah, 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 blah. They say that. You know, I'm tough on crime and I care about safety and blah, 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 blah. And what is the result of their policies? Every, if you took out the top 10 cities in the United States of America with Chicago, Philadelphia, we already mentioned it. New York City is off the chain. Rudy Giuliani fixed New York City. Off the two chains. And they they forgot. They got soft and stupid, and they put a communist in charge, and now it's a, it's a freaking shooting gallery again. If you took, all right, San Francisco. You take San Francisco, L.A., Chicago, New York, Philadelphia. If you take their crime statistics out, out of the United States, our crime statistics and murder rates drop to some of the lowest in the world. You cannot separate that unless you're unless you're a Democrat, because if you're a Democrat, then the truth means nothing to you. It's all about propaganda. So this happened in Philadelphia. Let's move on to the next story. So in Philadelphia, a Democrat congressperson, congresswoman, um, she kind of looks like a skeleton with skin stretched over it. So she gets jacked, right? And Philly, they're like, well, we have this DA that was supported by Soros, and he's like soft on crime and no, no, no. And we can't figure out why we keep voting for Democrats year after year after year, and, and our city is a crime-infested crap hole. How does that happen? Well, I don't know. Let's go to Chicago. Should we go to Chicago? Let's do it. 
So after eliminating cash bail in Illinois, state Senate uh, state senator is carjacked by armed assailants. Okay, and this story was when reported this was December twenty third. So the the previous one was December twenty second. Yeah. So Literally one day, day later, <laughs> there's one day separation between these stories. So, but see, the Crowder story is a little bit more fun. Yeah, this is from Joseph Gunderson wrote this. He said, you reap what you sow, I suppose, and karma is a bitch. And after completely trashing the state's cash bond system in January of this year, which was 2021, yep. Illinois state senator is probably regretting her vote in favor of the action. This is from Forest Park Review. It says, quote, passage of the Pretrial Fairness Act makes Illinois the first state in the nation to completely abolish cash bail. Which means the requirement that arrestees post a monetary bond as a way of ensuring that they return for their trial. So does so, that mean that there's just do they just let them go now? Yeah, they, they just it's, let them go. You just you, they arrest you. They take your pictures, fingerprints. Of course, most people that are being arrested already have their fingerprints and pictures on file. Yeah, um, and then they give you a piece of paper that says you have to be back for trial on this day and you sign it even though you just robbed a bank or a grocery yeah, store or stole a car an honest person and you sign that and then they're like okay peace out and you're back on the street before the cop who arrested you is finished doing the report about the arrest he just made but that's no big deal uh, geez. who cares that's fair that's what the people want is fairness. But perhaps. <laughs> yeah, but perhaps some system of keeping bad guys and gals in jail might be a good thing. State Senator Kimberly Lightford, Lightford, not Lightfoot. Kimberly Lightford. Lightford. I almost said Lightfoot. Yeah, that's with her not husband, the other. Not yeah, Beetlejuice. That, yeah, was carjacked on December 21st, 2021. Three armed assailants fired multiple shots during the event. Though no one was hurt, the carjackers made off with her Mercedes. It's good to be a state senator. You driving around in Mercedes? How Those much actually, do people make? I uh, said so the Mercedes aren't that expensive anymore. Hmm. Will the lawmaker learn her lesson? Maybe admit that she and her fellow politicians in the Illinois State Assembly were wrong? Probably not. They never do. If they did, the Wakusha killer wouldn't have been let out on a thousand dollar bail and allowed to kill people. Which mm -hmm. an Illinois Democrat called karma for Kyle Rittenhouse being found not guilty. Yep. Good That's Lord. what Democrats think. They did that. This is yeah. crazy. No Democrats uh, says no. No. Democrats will make up some kind of excuse for the carjacking. Perhaps criminals needed bread or something. Or and school country, clothes. Yeah. And the country will be worse for it. Yeah. Yeah. We've so, seen this before. Yep. The, the excuse making for criminals. Yep. That I told you it's all in the book. It's all it's I think it's chapter four uh, of uh, examining the armed citizen. We, we point out time after time after time that Democrats, Democrats are socialists. OK, can we admit that the Democrats today are not your great grandpa's Democrats? All right. They're, they're not, these aren't the 1930, 1940. They're not JFK oh, Democrats. Yeah, we're not, we're all for the, the blue collar working man. And I'm not, no, the Democrat party of the United States is run and funded by communists. Socialists are communists and new, new dress and lipstick. Okay. Uh, and these people. Do not give one fat rat's rear end about the safety of you, the citizen. They care about power and money. And they get power and money by keeping you scared. All right. And normally, see, this is the this is where karma sneaks up and is a biatch. You see, normally these people insulate themselves from the problems that they create. Normally, they're able to, you know, 
hide in their expensive gated communities uh, or in their apartment condo complexes with, you know, security and locked doors and stuff. Normally, they don't have to experience the problems that they create with their own policies. But it's gotten so bad. See, that's the, that is the beauty. That's the karma of this is it's gotten so bad. Their policies have created so much chaos that they even they can't escape from it. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to cry for these people. They created these problems. And now they're it's 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 like telling someone it's like, don't drink that. It's poison. And they and they look at you like, shut up. I'm not a stupid, paranoid Trumper like you. Glug, 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 glug. Then they die of poisoning. Is that a tragedy? Is that a sad tragedy? No, it's pre- it's a predictable action. You say, um, maybe it's not a great idea to just put in a revolving door in the jailhouse and let recidivist criminals just come and go. And this isn't new. Remember, we came to these microphones, Jerry. Remember the, the the guy who robbed the bank, got out on bail, and was back and robbed another bank like a day later. It's crazy. There, and, all right, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but wasn't there a guy who committed like six robberies in seven days? Here's the thing: the I justice system has ju- in these places has just become a game of tag. I'm going to run away, do my thing. You're going to touch me. I'm going to go, oh, darn, I'm out. You're going to go to timeout, and then you get back in the freeze. game. It's that's like, all it it's is. like freeze tag. Yeah, that's all it is. There's no actual consequence. It's just, uh, I've been no. impeded for a second. And then and then they'll then they'll tell you, they're, well, the court system is so backed up. Oh, we can't get these people in before a judge for six months because, oh, there's so many. Why is that? What, why is your court system so backed up? Why can't you get these people in front of a judge for six months? Why do you have so many effing criminals in your city? Because this is the best place in the world to be a criminal because there's no accountability for it. One thing that I haven't figured out yet um, is do cities create criminals or do criminals flock to cities? Uh, both. Well, the environment... It, it it well it it's a the environment fosters criminal behavior. Just because uh, there's more people in because there's there's place, anonymity there's anonymity, and then when you put us you have a situation where people default when when people default to the state when when you know it's the nine one one it's not my job it's not my job to to you know make to make people not rob me. It's the state's job. It's the police's job. It's the da da da. And, and for every, this is the psycho thing, Jared. We see this repeated ad nauseum over and over and over again. And yet people refuse San Francisco, Philadelphia, Chicago, you name it. They refuse to wake up and say, Hey, maybe our decisions are, maybe we made some bad choices. Maybe constantly putting these socialist Democrat scumbags into office, not the best thing to do. Well, that's not it at all. It's not the policies. It's not the behavior. It's not the, the, the like Zach said, the, the game of tag, the catch and release policies. That, that's not what does it. It's Let me guess. Oh, it's people in Indiana who own guns. That's whose fault it is. Remember when that that communist crap bag DeBozo blamed Virginia for the crime rise in New York? Well, if people in Virginia didn't have guns, then they wouldn't uh, come to New York, and it's their fault. Really? What? If that's the case, why wouldn't the people just stay in Virginia and commit the crimes? It's like Chicago. Well, if we're right next door to Indiana, and Indiana has very lax gun control, and and if Indiana had better gun control, then then our Chicago criminals wouldn't have guns. What? 
Why don't the people just stay in Indiana and, well, they go to Gary. <laughs> Indiana people get that joke. But uh, uh, the, it, and, and that is part of the Democrat mantra is never, ever, ever accept responsibility for your own failures. It's always someone else. It's the gun manufacturers. Um, Wyoming has a has the highest gun ownership per capita in the United States of America. Their Beetlejuice and all the other scumbag Democrats. Why doesn't Wyoming have the highest crime and murder rate in the country if guns are the problem? You're a racist. <laughs> That'd be the answer. You're an anti-vaxxer. You must be an anti-vaxxer thinking with your brain like that, trying to be logical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let me throw an epaulette at you. <laughs> oh, I hate it when I'm right. Do you guys hate it when I'm right, or do you love it when I'm right? You're right? Mm, I'm right a lot. Uh, oh. What if I... I have been coming to this microphone and saying for literally years that it is time to call a spade a spade. It is time to be honest and say, look, if you live in a state where they charge you where they, where they force you, you say, well, it's my constitutional right to carry a firearm for self-defense and protection. But if I want to exercise that right, I have to go to the state, ask for permission, and give them money. And then after thinking about it for a while, they'll take my money and sell my rights back to me. And I've said into this microphone, can you guys... I don't know how many, for years. Can we safely say it's been years? Yes. You guys are probably sick of hearing it by now. You're like, I get it, Paul. It's 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 holding your rights hostage. It's ransom. And if you or I did, if you or I set up a scheme that has been set up by the government in the States, we'd go to jail. Like, we would go to jail for extortion. If you or I set up the exact same scheme as the state sets up, we would be charged with extortion, kidnapping, you know, ransom, whatever. But the state, the state can set up an extortion racket. You know, criminals, organized criminals, mafia guys go to jail for doing this. It's kind of like the state lottery. If you have a state that has a state lottery, but it, they have they have anti gambling statutes, you're like, hang on a second. I can't have a pay to play poker game at the at the Elk Club because that violates the state's gambling statute. That's right. But you can sell lottery tickets at the Seven Eleven, yeah, because the state. It's like when I, Jerry, did I ever tell you about when I was in the academy? the police academy and we had to we went through the because we had to go through the entire state revised code mm -hmm. every section rape robbery murder car theft and including gambling right so we, we we get to the gambling part of the education and they're like okay statute da 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 da, da. And i raised my hand i was like they're like yeah i said doesn't the state lottery system violate that right there and the instructor's like yes it does <laughs> yes it does <laughs> i said okay so what so the the lesson for today is if the state does it it's okay if an if the average citizen does it they're a criminal yes okay we got a story from Amoland.com. And this is one of those, see, I told you so, but I am glad. I am I I feel vindicated 
that this I, that the idea that I've been fostering on this microphone for like many years now as being picked up. Yeah, it says this is from MLN.com. December 29. Yes. <clears throat> Problems with Alabama State Computer System are preventing sheriff's departments from being able to issue carry permits for the time being. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. But what is the title? Oh, the title is Alabama Alabama Carry Permit Delays. Sheriffs Oppose Constitutional Carry. Sheriffs Oppose Constitutional Carry. Alabama could have avoided this situation if it had passed constitutional carry and joined the 21 other states that allow eligible law-abiding adults to carry concealed without having to first apply for a government permission or pay fees. Unfortunately, Alabama sheriffs have been vocal opponents of constitutional carry, preferring to sell your rights back to you and fund their departments with the revenue. B I N G O. This is what happens when you let the government wait. All right. First of all, a permit is tax. Can, can we all admit that? When the government says you have to give us money in order to do something, that's a tax. Now, they might not use the word T-A-X, but it is a tax. And what do we know about government and taxing? Once they get it, they will never voluntarily or willingly let it go because they start except spending for, the money. Except for in those 21 states. Right. Well, they did that because the people called their senators and their and their congressmen, their state senators and their state congressmen reps and said, hey, do this. And they're like, mm, OK, I like this job, so I better do that because uh, if I don't, then I won't have this job. Well, you mean year. you mean when the people that are being represented get, get actually get involved it, it like can affect change? Yeah. Holy cow. Mind blown. Yeah. So what what they did in Alabama is the crazy thing about Alabama, though, is Alabama used to be shall issue. So you want to hear something that's, that's, that's crazy? I actually didn't know that they were shall issue and then they went to. Oh, no, they're may issue. I'm sorry. They were. Uh, that's what I meant yeah. in my head. Yeah. Yeah. They were may issue. Okay. It was, it was discretionary, but when it was discretionary versus shall issue, it was actually easier. Wow. Cause you like, literally I was with my good friend uh, who lives in Alabama the day he went to get his discretionary, his may issue permit. We, this is crazy. You're not gonna believe you're like, oh, it's a lie. No, no. I couldn't believe it myself. <laughs> we we were on uh I was in the Marine Corps. We were on holiday leave. I think it was Christmas leave or something like that. So he's like, I want to I he said, I uh my friend or whatever told me I, I need to go ahead and get my my permit. So we went into the police department and he said, Hey, I want to get my concealed carry permit. And they said, Okay. Fill this out. It was one piece of paper. He filled it out. He gave them, I think it was 10 bucks. It might have been 20. They said, thanks. They gave him a card that day with his name on it, the sheriff stuff, and it said, permit to carry concealed. He hmm. put it in his wallet. We left. Wow. That day. All, all. And so it was a simpler process. Now, people said, yeah, but the thing is, if you lived where he lived, the sheriff was a cool guy. Where I live, the sheriff is a dick. And he said no. So what you had is you had like this guy is a cool guy. And he's like, hey, Bob, how you doing, Jim? You want your permit? OK, here you go. See you later, man. Peace out. But then you go up to Birmingham and they're like, Fuck you, nobody gets one. Oops, write that down. So they they amended the law several years ago, and they're like, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do shall issue, but <laughs> it's going to cost you. It ain't going to be free. And you got to, and then what they did is they did the whole, 
you know, you got to do this, got to give us this fingerprints, pictures, fill out the thing, background check. Da, 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 da. And then after within 90 days, you get your permit or whatever. Right. And that seemed, see, this is how it went, how the populace is kind of like children growing up. You know, how, like when you're a kid, you think something is a really good deal or it was a good idea. And then you grow up, you get a little older, a little more experienced, and you look at that and you're like, yeah, when I was a kid, I thought that was a great idea. Now that I'm older, wiser, have some more life experience, probably not a great idea. But when I was six, it seemed like a great idea, right? You know, when you're six years old, having cookies every day for breakfast seems like a great idea, you know? Um, and when you're 40, you're like, if I have cookies every day, I'm going to have diabetes, I'm going to be fat, and I'm going to die. You know? Probably not a great idea. In the 90s, the idea that um, that citizens, because we'd gone so far, the pendulum had swung so far over to the other side that people forgot that they were citizens. Really, they did. I mean, um, Americans, and you, because the truth is, when I was young, Unless you lived in Detroit, downtown Detroit, or Chicago, or, or New York City, or whatever, you generally weren't concerned about street crime. People who lived in suburban America, in rural America, they weren't concerned about street crime and home invasion. A, a home invasion, if there was a home invasion within the borders of the United States of America, it would have been six o'clock news everywhere. It would have been crazy and unheard of. Today, there's a home invasion in Chicago in where you don't unless you live right there in that city, you don't hear about it. Unless it was particularly heinous, right? So people were kind of okay with, you know, the, the government, while we weren't paying attention, the government's like, you know, the peasants shouldn't be allowed to carry concealed weapons. And they're like, yeah, you're right. The peasants shouldn't be allowed to carry concealed weapons. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and ban it. We're going to make it illegal. It wasn't illegal. It was perfectly legal because we used to know that it violated the Constitution. <laughs> like, we used to understand that banning, disallowing someone from carrying a gun violated Article 2, you know, Amendment 2 of the Bill of Rights. We're like, yeah, but you can't do that, right? Because it says right there. And you're like, oh, okay, well, yeah. So we won't. Most state, you guys understand most state constitutions mirror the U.S. Constitution pretty closely. They're not numbered the same, but uh, just about every state constitution has a Bill of Rights, Second Amendment kind of thing in it, you know. So while we as Americans were basically not concerned and not paying attention, they passed all these concealed carry bans. Not allowed to have a gun on you. It's illegal. Da, 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 da. And John Q. Citizen wasn't all that concerned about it. They're like, yeah, whatever. It's not a big deal. You know, I'm not really concerned with crime. I live in a safe area. It doesn't happen. Well, then things changed. We talked about it. Florida broke the mold. And then after Florida did it, you know, we, we started getting shall issue. And then we pushed for that. And then there were, but there were states in the United States like New Hampshire, um, and Arizona. And so they're like, I don't, I don't know what you freaking slaves are doing, but we don't require permission slip. Just you're a citizen. The Constitution is your permission slip. And then other people are like, yeah, that's, that's true. I actually just went and read that. And that is my permission slip. The state doesn't have the authority to tell me no. So here we are in a new world where we've got 21 states where the citizens have woken up and said, you know, I don't have to ransom my rights back from the state. And the state doesn't have the right to take a 
well, a, a constitutionally protected right. They don't have the authority to take a constitutionally protected right and charge me for it and make me come to them every four years and give them a, a tax so that I can exercise a right. They don't have the authority to do that. Here's the deal. Right now, in Alabama, every sheriff is violating the Constitution. What? Yeah, I'll say it again for the people in the back row that didn't hear me. If you live in a state like Alabama, where the sheriff says, uh, no, if you want your constitutionally guaranteed right to self-defense, you have to show up, give us money, photos, fingerprints, go through a background check. We'll take your picture, put it on a plastic card, and send it to you in the mail. Then you come back, I'm not sure when it is, four or five years, and do it again. That's how it works. <clears throat> Wrong. According to the Constitution of the United States of America, you are violating the law. Now, whether you say, oh, oh, come on, man, that's taking it too far. No, actually, that's exactly the case. You say, but, but they're doing it and they're getting away with it. Just because someone's doing it and getting away with it doesn't mean it's not a violation of the Constitution. Really? Is that how that works? That's really how that works. <laughs> what did the, the federal judge say? I should print it up on a freaking poster and put it right there. <laughs> he said, he said, what did he say? Uh, violating the law or a history of violation of the law does not constitute legality. Yeah, something like that. Just because you been breaking the law, it's like little kid talks. Like, well, I've been doing, I've been skipping school. I've been skipping school for three days <laughs> and you never caught me yet. It was like, yeah, but it was, it was wrong the first time you did it. Just because you got away with it a whole bunch of times doesn't mean it's okay. Yeah, but in little kid thinking, it's like the longer I get away with it, the more okay it becomes. If I can get away with, if I break the lamp, but my parents don't find out about it for a month, then I can just say, well, that lamp was broken a month ago. And you're just now, you're just now getting mad about it. <laughs> it was still wrong. Whether I found out about you breaking the lamp a day later or a month later, you breaking the lamp was still wrong. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's been a whole month. I mean, you know, I, that See, that's kid mentality. Jared, when you were a kid, when you guys were kids, you, you get, did something wrong. You're like, the longer I can get away with this, the less severe it will be right yeah it's like i can i can always i can say like yeah but yeah but i that was long that was like a long time ago man i mean i mean i've been doing that or i've been repeatedly doing that for weeks now and you're just now catching on it was wrong when you did it originally <laughs> just because you've been doing this and here's the thing about alabama and every other state they'll tell you they're like oh hey 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 hey! our state assembly went into session and they voted and they created this law that makes it legal no it doesn't because if you compare that to the supreme law of the land it invalidates it what you mean that guys just can't go into a building and make stuff up and that de facto makes it the law like they could come out of the building and say we've just passed a law that everyone has to wear purple shirts on thursday and if you don't we're going to arrest you <laughs> just because you just because you all went in the room and voted on it doesn't mean it's it's legal doesn't mean we have to obey yeah you do you have to you have to wear purple shirts on Thursday or you're going to jail. The good news is, though, you can just sign your name and walk out. <laughs> you sign your name, walk out the back door and go 
not wear a purple shirt for the rest of the day. Hmm. So I'm very pleased that Ammo Land, and this story is from, um, it's, it's a publication from the IRA's ILA. And as we've been talking about for ever since we turned this microphone on, I've, I've said that the most valuable, probably the most valuable or important component of the NRA has been what? The ILA, the Institute for Legislative Action. That's probably the most important aspect of the NRA. Uh, and the fact that they use that verbiage in there, that they said that they want to sell your rights back to you. Where does it say that? It says uh, Alabama, blah, 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 blah. Uh, da, 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 no indication. So they're preferring to sell your rights back to you and fund their departments with the revenue. Yep. Preferring to sell your rights back to you. It's an extortion scam. They're like, yeah, you can have your rights, but you're going to have to pay for it. I mean, what's the big deal? You give us some money, fill out the paperwork, do what we say, then you can have your rights back. Okay? It'd be a shame. This is, these are some nice rights you have there. It would be a shame if something bad were to happen to those rights. So, fork over the dough. Let's, hey, let's go to INRA. ILA.org right now. And the great thing about NRAILA.org right now is that you can go to, you can do the hamburger pull down menu, uh, and you can go to do -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do gun laws by state. You can go to gun laws by state, and you can go to Alabama, and you can click on it, and you go bum 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 bum. Uh, conceal carry shall issue, and then it has reciprocity. Um, doesn't have the specs though, like how much it costs, or does it? Let's see. Now I don't see the the specs. See, so I'm curious as to how much these these sheriffs are extorting. <laughs> I, I'm going to go to internet.com. How much does and a l c p l cost 40 nope. bucks is that what it is you found it already i don't know i was just guessing c w permit cost 100 bucks no, let me see no it's all right here alabama concealed carry it says uh set by the sheriff generally 20 dollars per year so $100 for five-year permit. So if you want a five-year permit, it is $100 plus fingerprints. And see, that's another thing that they... Remember back in the olden days when we used to go ask for permission slips? Yeah. And they'd say, oh, well, the, see, the permit fee is blank, but that doesn't cover the cost of you getting your fingerprints taken. No. You're like, well, what... Isn't it all in one? No. You you gotta pay you gotta pay the sergeant to take your fingerprints. And that's another fifteen dollars or twenty dollars or whatever. So there you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, uh are oh we have been live on Discord this whole time. Uh did I skip over a question? No. Uh no, the only I question that was I thought there was a the question. There was earlier in the Brown House bullet points. About oh, okay, the, okay, and, okay. And we answered it. All so right, so there aren't there are no further questions from the live audience. No further questions, I'm Your Honor. I, really no quick. further questions, Your Honor. I just want to make sure. <laughs> uh, nope, no questions for you. Okay. Wait. There are questions for other people? Yeah. Uh, they, they were talking amongst themselves. Oh. They're just ig ignoring me and sp talking amongst themselves. Oh, okay. That's it. Remember when... I used to accidentally pay attention to the comments <laughs> and then mother lovers would be like having sidebar conversations in the, <laughs> and I'm like, Hey, Hey, pay attention. I'm talking over here. Have your sidebar conversations another time. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, I see we had uh, about, I don't know, a bunch of people in the Discord today, 11, 12, 13, 14. Um, if you're listening to this right now and you're listening to it on Wednesday on the normal format, whether it's iHeartRadio or whatever, that's great. Uh, I do have a request for you guys. It's a brand new year. Oh, Farfignugan. What did we not talk about today? I have no idea. We've talked about a lot of stuff. Well, we had a company that decided oh, yeah. they wanted to work with us as a video sponsor. Yep, stand by on that. Oh, stand by? Well, yeah, we'll have an official announcement. Okay. When that's So when that don't goes. say that. Yeah, when that goes, right. we'll have yeah. Oh. I oh. messaged you the other day and I said, should I put the thing? Yes, up banners are fine. Okay, we'll, okay, okay, okay. Yes, I know what okay. I'm doing. Okay. Just All right. sure. do an official announcement when we when we can. Okay, Jared says we're gonna do it when we can. But either way, it is a brand new year. We have sponsors. SDS Imports, Brownells, Crossbreed. Keep going. Dirt Dirt coat. coat. Yeah. Yep. We got High Point uh, Firearms on high here point, as well. Barnall Barnall Ammunition. Yep. Um, this would be a great time for you to reach out to them on one of their platforms and say, hey, I listened to Student of the Gun Radio. Thank you for being their sponsor. And you say, yeah, I did that five years ago. Do it again. I get that. You should do it every day. I, I get that. But, you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like the Janet Jackson thing. Nope, I don't know this one. Uh, all I want for Christmas is you. No, what have I? What have you done for me lately? Oh, that. <laughs> yeah. No, we 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 want the people at, at our sponsors to to know that you guys are actually still out there paying attention, because we brag on you how you are the most dedicated, grateful. I don't know who said patriotic. Um, people enthusiastic audience in the firearms media world um we i've been accused of being a cult leader <laughs> <laughs> because you guys are so crazy freaking dedicated uh, we so appreciate that we every do time, appreciate that every time you listen to an a an episode of student of the gun radio you should go thank our sponsors because yeah. that's the reason that the episode is there that's right all right so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna drive on uh, we're going to do our bonus hour and uh, bonus hour. And we're going to record that on. Um, we have a Thursday bonus hour and a Friday bonus hour. So if you'd like to be a part of the grad program and listen to the bonus hours, and trust me, you really do go to get SOTG.com and uh, follow that. And it's going to help you out. You're going to be a happy camper. So there you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages. Thank you for joining us for the wicked whopper wild Wednesday uh, episode. Remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at the Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links. And remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.